Welcome back guys, Sherry here. First and foremost, I would just like to say thank you guys so much for over 5,000 subscribers. I appreciate all the love and support that you guys have given me. So I decided to put together a video for some of you that may have just gotten the game or you're just starting the game and you're a little lost. You don't really know which way you're supposed to go. So I'm going to share with you some tips and tricks that will help you get off the Great Plateau. Not only is this going to help you in the Great Plateau, but it's probably going to help you throughout your entire gameplay. And for those of you that are struggling to reach the shrine in the cold climate area, I'm going to show you a couple of different ways we can get there. I'm also going to show you a couple of different ways we can get the warm doublet. And I'm going to show you some easy to cook recipes that may help you when traversing the Great Plateau. However, if you would like to skip forward to anything, I'm going to leave timestamps in the description below. But now when we first wake up, all they give us is a pair of pants, a shirt, and a Sheikah slate. Which I don't even have mine on yet, so don't forget to equip those. But everything else, they pretty much just leave it up to us to figure out. The first thing I'm going to suggest is to gather anything and everything you can find. And learn to crouch just by pressing down on the left stick. This is going to make you less noticeable to critters, animals, and even enemies. Now to know which direction to go in, shortly after you wake up, Zelda is going to talk to you. And she's going to tell you to follow your Sheikah Slate. Head for the point marked on the map in your Sheikah Slate. And guys, you really need to learn to use your Sheikah Slate and let it become your best friend throughout this entire game. However, we can still explore and gather materials and you can pretty much do anything you want because it is an open world. But once you open your Sheikah Slate, you're going to see a yellow flashing circle. That's pretty much the direction we want to head in. But on your way towards the yellow flashing circle, there may be some things you might want to consider doing first. One of which is talking to this old man and he is going to point us towards the Temple of Time, which I highly suggest you check out. But on your way there, pick up anything and everything you can find. You're going to find a torch laying against the rock behind the old man, and then you're going to find a baked apple laying on the ground. And that's the game's way of showing you that you can throw food on a fire to cook it. And when you cook food, it's going to allow you to recover more hearts than it would if you were to eat it raw. We're also going to find a woodcutter's axe sticking out of a stump. And then you're going to see a big pond. Now, if you see something that just doesn't look right, you should investigate it. Because you never really know what you might find. Now, this little guy is a Korok. And he has lots of friends scattered throughout this map. In fact, there are 900 of them. But we're going to need these Korok seeds later on in the game to expand our inventory. So if you ever see anything that just doesn't look right, I suggest you investigate it. And when you're swimming like this in the water, don't let that little green wheel run out. That is your stamina wheel. If it runs out, you're going to drown. But it is okay to die, especially in the beginning, because you're probably going to die a lot. And whenever you're around water, take the opportunity to look around, because most of the time you may find some fish. And swimming with no clothes, Link actually swims faster. Until, of course, later on in the game, you can get some special armor that will make you swim faster. Now, after you find a sword, I highly suggest you run around and cut the long grass. Because this is where we're going to find critters, like crickets, lizards, frogs, and later on in the game, you'll even find fairies. Now, we can also find frogs hanging out in the water. And don't forget to check the trees. Some of the larger trees will have bird eggs. And try to take it slow when you're collecting things, just like these butterflies. They're very easy to miss. Sometimes they're hard to see. And once you get a bow, go hunting for everything. There's squirrels, there's birds, and even wild boar. And once you get your bombs, I highly suggest you start gathering wood. Now you can switch between your round bombs and your square bombs. That way you don't have to wait so long for it to charge. But if you use your bombs instead of your woodcutter's axe, it's going to save your durability on your weapons. But you are going to need wood throughout this entire game. But let's keep making our way to the Temple of Time. Now you're going to run across a couple of enemies. And guys, you don't have to fight. It's okay to run. But if you do fight them, you'll start obtaining better weapons. And they're also going to drop monster parts, which we need for cooking. But now if you're patient, just crouch down and you can sneak up on them and get a one-hit kill. Or try to use the environment to your advantage. If you see some boulders hanging over a cliff or over top of some bomb barrels, just push it off. Or if you see a lantern hanging in a skull encampment, just shoot it down. So whether you fight or not, just make sure and search the area real good. Because we're going to find some Hylian trousers 
and we're also going to find a couple of bows. But make sure and throw vases, smash barrels with your woodcutter's axe if you run across them, because typically you're going to find things hiding within. But if you make your way up top, we will find a soldier's bow. Now when you're climbing a ladder, if you just climb it, it won't use any stamina. But if you try to jump while you're climbing, it will use your stamina. So just be careful and don't run out of stamina. Now let's just keep heading towards our yellow dot. Now right before you get to where we need to be, you're going to see these two bokoblins, and they're going to be shooting arrows at you. Now I highly recommend that you don't kill these two just yet, because we can collect unlimited arrows from these guys. Run around, collect the ones that they are shooting at you, and once they stop spawning, all we have to do is run away from them until we can get them out of our line of sight and they disappear. Once they disappear, we just run back and the arrows will respawn. And guys, they might chase you just a little bit, but they will stop and they'll turn around and go back to their heel. And this will work with almost any enemies that are shooting arrows at you. But if you kill these guys, then they're gone until you can get off the Great Plateau and get a Blood Moon, which will cause them to respawn. So I just really highly suggest that you leave them here. That way you've got unlimited arrows while you're here on the Great Plateau. And now let's finally make it to our yellow dot so we can place our Sheikah Slate, raise the towers, and open the map to the Great Plateau. Now all we have to do is make our way down the tower and we're gonna run into the old man again. But there's something else you will notice. After we open the tower, we get a time clock, which means now we will have nightfall, but we'll go over that a little bit later. Now talking to the old man, he's gonna explain to you that a tower like this and several others have erupted all across the land, almost as though a long dormant power has awoken quite suddenly. And then he's gonna explain to you that the Great Plateau is isolated, and if you were to jump off, it would be sudden death. Unless, of course, you had a paraglider like his, and then he's gonna offer it to you, but only in exchange for treasure out of the shrines. He's gonna point you in the right direction for the first shrine, so let's make our way there. And all we have to do is place our Sheikah Slate in the pedestal, and that will open the shrine. Now, when you get here, it's kind of straightforward. Just place your Sheikah Slate again, and then we're gonna obtain a room called Magnesis. And all you have to do to activate this is tap the L, and anything metal that we can interact with is going to glow. So all we have to do here is just pick this up and move it, and we will drop down into a different room. And once we get into this other room, you're gonna see a couple of metal boxes, and you're gonna see some stone blocks. Now, behind the stone blocks, there is a Guardian Scout. You can actually use these metal boxes to push the stones out of the way, and you can even use them to kill the Guardian Scout. And when using Magnesis, we can actually push and pull this just by using the directional pad. You can push it away from you, or you can pull it towards you. Just practice with it, you'll get the hang of it. Then we're gonna see like a metal door laying across these openings. Let's just pick it up and move it so we can get across. And then we're gonna come to two big metal doors. All we have to do is just pull those open. collect your orb from the monk, and then we're out of here. Now these orbs, guys, they are gonna be used so that we can get extra hearts and extra stamina. But you have to have four before you can get any additional hearts or stamina. Once we make it out of the shrine, we're gonna run across the old man again. He is gonna tell you that he actually wants more treasure before he's gonna give you the paraglider. Then he's gonna tell you to meet him at the top of the tower. Now this is the game's way of telling you that any shrine or tower we open is going to create a fast travel. So all we have to do is open the map and any blue icons we can travel to. Now before you head up on the tower, I would suggest you check the water with your magnesis. In fact, anytime you see water, you might want to check it with your magnesis because you can always usually find either some sunken treasure chests and this one actually has a piece of sunken door down in it, which we can use this to get across the sludge to reach these treasure chests. And I would also suggest you check the sludge for any metal objects because you just never really know what you might find. And don't forget to start busting open crates because typically they're gonna have goodies inside. Now, once we make it back up on the tower, he is gonna show us that we can look through our scope and we can spot other shrines. And while you have the scope open, you can actually drop a pin so that you can find them easy. 
Now this is an open world. You can go to whichever shrine you would like, but I would suggest that we head on over to this one here on the east side of the map. Now when we get here, we're gonna find some decayed guardians and they're gonna shoot lasers at you. Guys, you don't have to fight these. You can just run from them and make your way to the shrine. Now this shrine is where we're going to get our bombs. We're gonna get round bombs and square bombs. The round bombs, of course, are gonna roll and the square bombs won't. So just figure out which ones are gonna work best for you depending on the terrain. Now to be able to switch between your ruins, just hit up on your D-pad, on your directional pad, and then use the right stick to toggle left or right. And then you can switch between your bombs or your magnesis. And all we need to do here is just bomb through these broken blocks. Now to trigger the bombs, all you want to do is tap your L. If you want to drop it, hit A. And if you want to throw it, just hit the R button. And to detonate it, just hit the L button again. We are going to find a couple of broken block walls. We just want to bomb through them. One of which you're going to find a chest behind. The other wall is going to lead us into a room where you're going to see a moving platform. Now you can use your square bomb and set it down on the platform and then when it gets close to the broken wall, detonate it. Now once we make it into this room, you're going to see a ball getting tossed back and forth across the room. Now this is the game's way of telling us we could lay a bomb here and we can toss it back and forth across the room or we can actually toss ourselves across the room to be able to reach this chest. Now on the other side of the room, you're going to see, I guess, this round funnel. Let's place a round bomb in it until it will roll down and then it will shoot it across the room. Once it gets across the room, let's detonate it to break these broken blocks. Now let's make our way across the room, collect our orb, and we're out of here. When we make it out of the shrine, we're going to see a broken wall. So anytime you see these broken walls, just know that you can throw a bomb at them and they will break. Something I failed to mention when we were at the Temple of Time is anytime you see these old guardians laying around, make sure and search them because you're going to find some ancient parts, which you're really going to need for later gameplay to be able to get some ancient weaponry and ancient armor. And if you have the DLC, just jump up on this wall. You're going to find a chest, and this is where we can get the Nintendo shirt. Now let's get out of here, and let's make our way over towards this shrine. But before we make it to the next couple of shrines, do you remember earlier when I said now we have a time clock after opening the tower, and now we can get Nightfall? Well, this can prove to be extremely beneficial to you because now we have the option to sit by any fire and change the time of the day. We can sit until morning, noon, or night. Now, some people don't like the night because it will bring out stall monsters. But here on the Great Plateau, because we can't get a blood moon and therefore enemies do not respawn, the stall monsters will bring out more weapons and monster parts that we need to cook with. Now, the stall monsters can be a little overwhelming, but all you have to do is either blow them up or knock their heads off, and then we just go after the head. Now, a good way to do this is learn to use your ZL to target, because when you tap the ZL, it's going to immediately move the camera so that you can switch targets, just making it a lot easier to take them down. Nighttime is also going to bring out some bats, and tapping that ZL can really help in taking those down as well. You will also notice different critters will come out at night, such as beetles and sunset fireflies. Just make sure and crouch when collecting these so you don't scare them off. But my favorite thing about nighttime is that all enemies, except for the archers, will go to sleep at 10 o'clock. You'll see them blowing bubbles and then they just pass out, which means we can sneak into their camp. We can sneak in and grab their weapons if we want to, or we can sneak up on them and do a one-hit kill. Just make sure you're crouching when doing this. Sometimes after you strike them, Link will stand up, so just crouch back down. But if you run across an archer because they don't sleep, you need to take them out first, because if they see you, they will blow a horn and alert the other ones of your presence. Then you can go ahead and sneak into the camp. Okay, a couple more things before we head to the last two shrines is we can go right here to the gate that opens up to the cold climate and we're gonna find some spicy peppers. And the camp that I snuck into earlier, it also has some spicy peppers. 
But now let's cook a couple of dishes and then we're gonna head on over to the other shrines. And right here is where the camp and the gate are located. Okay, so we can't cook with an unlit pot. Now you can use a torch, a wooden weapon, or you can even use an arrow just to transfer the flame. Now we only have three hearts, so just cooking up just a simple fish by itself will recover two hearts. Now if you cook up a fish and an apple, it's gonna recover five hearts, but we don't need that many hearts, so don't waste your food. I would just start out cooking things by themselves at first, unless it is a critter, because critters require a monster part to make elixirs. So you have to cook a critter with a monster part or you're gonna get dubious food. Cooking can be confusing, so just think of critters like you would in the real world. It's gonna consist of your butterflies, crickets, beetles, fireflies, frogs, lizards, and things like that. Whereas your regular food will consist of meat, vegetables, mushrooms, herbs, eggs, things like that. And something else you need to keep in mind is you don't want to mix buffs. If something helps you with your stealth and something else helps you with your stamina, you don't want to mix those. If you do, you're gonna get dubious food. So do yourself a favor and save your game and then practice with your food. Once you figure out how to cook, then just go back and reload your game. That way you don't lose anything. But let's go over some recipes that I made that's gonna help you traverse this terrain here in the Great Plateau. Okay, cooking up one sunset firefly with a monster part, because it is a critter, it has to have a monster part, is going to give you a low level sneaky elixir for three minutes and 10 seconds. But if you cook up four fireflies with a monster part, you're gonna get a sneaky elixir for nine minutes and 10 seconds just by adding extra fireflies to it. If we cook up one summer wing butterfly with a monster part, we're gonna get a spicy elixir, which will allow us to make it in the cold climates for three minutes and 40 seconds. But now if you cook up two summer wing butterflies and a monster part, you're gonna get a spicy elixir for 11 minutes and 50 seconds. If we cook up five spicy peppers, we're gonna get a cold resistance for 12 minutes and 30 seconds. So the more peppers you put into the dish, the more time it's going to give you. Now to get a hasty elixir so that we can move faster, we just need to use some high tail lizards. Cooking up one with a monster part is gonna give us a speed boost for two minutes and 10 seconds. If you cook up two lizards and a monster part, you'll get one for three minutes and 10 seconds. So the more lizards you use, the longer the effect is going to last. Now to recover our stamina, we just need to cook up some crickets with a monster part. If you cook one with a monster part, you're gonna get a quarter of a wheel. If you cook up four crickets and a monster part, it will replenish your entire stamina wheel. Okay, so we are still headed towards this shrine, but along the way, we're gonna run across the old man's cabin. Now, depending on what time of the day you get here is gonna determine what the old man is doing. If you get here in the morning, he's gonna be chopping wood. If you get here in the middle of the night, he's gonna be sleeping. But if you get here in the evenings, he's gonna be resting by the fire. So this is the game's way of teaching you that you need to talk to people at different times of the day. But when you get here, just run into his cabin and you're gonna find his journal laying on a table. And in the journal, it's gonna talk about a spicy meat and seafood fry. And if anybody could remember the ingredient that he has forgotten, he will gladly give them the warm doublet. So just find him sitting by the fire in the evening and let's make him a spicy meat and seafood fry. He can remember the meat and he can remember the pepper, but the ingredient he forgot was fish, the high roll bass. Now for the meat, you can either use a raw drumstick from killing a bird, or you can use raw meat from the boars. But once we have the spicy meat and seafood fry, just talk to him again and tell him you made something and he is gonna hand over the warm doublet. Now there is two other ways to obtain the warm doublet. One of which is to drink a spicy elixir and traverse the climate without the warm doublet and reach this summit where we will find the old man and he will praise us for making it this far and then he will hand over the warm doublet. And the other way to get the warm doublet is to make it through all four shrines without it obtain the paraglider, and then return to the old man's cabin and you'll find it sitting in a chest. Okay, so to get to the last two shrines, now we can go either way. We can go here next to the old man's cabin or we could go through the gate. 
Now, if you go through the gate, you're gonna run into some ice choo-choos, and then you're gonna have to traverse a broken bridge with these metal doors, and it sits over top of freezing cold ice water. So I'm just gonna go here next to the old man's cabin. Now, if you get here during the day, or you sit by a fire and you make it daytime, you're gonna find the old man chopping wood, and he's gonna tell you that it's all in the hips when you cut a tree down as to where the tree is going to fall. So all we gotta do is just walk towards a tree, whichever direction we want it to land, and chop it down. And then it's gonna create a bridge so that we can get across through here. Now it can be a little nerve wracking to get across this, but if you were to fall, they're just gonna put you right back up where you were. Now if you happen to pick up a Korok leaf from cutting down a tree, you can use that and just blow these guys off the cliff if you want to. Now around the corner you're going to see some broken rocks. Just make sure and bomb through those. You're going to find a chest. And then we just want to climb this cliff. And this is where your elixirs may come in handy. You can drink a hasty elixir, which will give you a little bit more speed in helping you climb this cliff. And then if you start to run out of stamina, just drink one of your energizing elixirs and it will refill your stamina wheel. And you can kind of follow the mushrooms up the side of this cliff so you know which way to go, but there's also platforms where you can stop and rest. And once we make it to the top, we're gonna find our shrine. Once again, let's just place our Sheikah Slate onto the pedestal and we will receive our Stasis Rune. Now Stasis will freeze items. We're gonna see this big gear wheel turning around that has a platform attached to it. We just want to freeze it so that we can make it across. Once you make it across, you can hit it again and unfreeze it because each rune has to charge. But if you can stop it, then it doesn't take as long to charge. And then we just want to freeze this ball so that we can run behind it. You probably could make it all the way to the top, but I didn't risk it. Now, after you make it to the top and grab your chest, let's just turn around and we're gonna find a sledgehammer. Then we are gonna see a big round stone ball. All we need to do is freeze it, hit it with our sledgehammer and knock it out of the way. Now there is a stone talus on the Great Plateau and this sledgehammer can come in very useful for that. But let's just grab our orb and we are out of here. Now let's head to our last shrine. Now you're gonna run into some enemies, but other than that, it's kind of a straight shot. Now you should have some fire arrows. You can create yourself a fire by shooting a fire arrow into a stack of wood. And then you could just wait until nighttime and sneak past these guys. However, they are kind of easy to run past. So either way, once we make it to the shrine, once again, let's place our Sheikah Slate into the pedestal and we will receive our Cryonis rune. And now all we need to do is build ourselves an ice block so we can reach the ledge. Now you can point at your feet and you can build an ice block right up underneath yourself. When we make it around the corner, you're gonna see a gate. Just build an ice block up underneath it so it will lift the gate. Now once you make it around this corner, you're gonna see a guardian scout. He's pretty easy to take out, just hit him with an arrow. And right here in the middle, we're gonna find a chest. You can just build yourself an ice block so that you can lift yourself up to reach it. And then we just need to build an ice block under one side so we can create a ramp and reach the steps. Now let's grab our orb and we are out of here. Now once we get the last shrine on the Great Plateau, the old man is gonna show up again. And he's gonna tell you to imagine an X on the map. And where those lines intersect is where he wants you to meet him, which ends up being right here at the Temple of Time. Now, once we make it back to the Temple of Time, since we have collected four orbs, now we're gonna see the statue glow. And if we go up and pray, this is where we can either get an extra heart vessel or a stamina vessel. Then the old man's gonna show up again and we have to make our way to the roof to reach him. Once we make it to the top, he's gonna reveal who he is and finally give us the paraglider. Now, while you're up here, up high, this is a great opportunity to look around and try to find more towers and shrines. You can place pins on them so that you can find them easily. Now, remember earlier when I said there's a stone talus here on the Great Plateau? Let me show you how you can beat him easily. Once you have your bombs and you have collected the sledgehammer, all we have to do is throw bombs at his arms and it will knock his arms off and it will stun him causing him to fall forward. Once he falls forward, 
All you need to do is just climb up on top of him and just start welling on him with your sledgehammer. Now you can hit the black stone that's on top of his head with an arrow to stun him, but I just find it easier to throw bombs at his arms and blow his arms off. So I hope this video helps guys, and if you have any other comments that you would like to add, please leave them below. But if you'd like to see more things that I wish I would have known earlier about dragons, click here. And if you enjoy content like this, show me with a like. And if you're new to the channel, I hope you consider subscribing. And I'll just catch you guys next time.